Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a goal. Oh, there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Wow. It's over the bar. Today's RTGA podcast would like to be taken in context, please. Hello, how are we all doing and welcome along. I'm joined today by Rory O'Neill, Colin Cooper and by Kevin McStay. And we are going to look at the full forward line on the All-Star football team of the Sunday Game Era. How are we doing, lads? Very good. Oh, good. Good, Mikey. Hey, good, good stuff, good stuff. Right, we'll, we'll move on with the football quickly. No, uh, we, we won't go off topic. <laughs> Can I say I have a... I shall show you the team now as it stands, which would be uh, a good place to start. Uh, we, ha- we have a half forward line now, and uh, we-, we-, we finally have an Ulster man on the team. Um, so, can we see that? On the way, we can. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got it. yeah. So, for those, for those listening without pictures, we have Stephen Cluxton in goal, we have Mark O'Shea, Seamus Moynan, and Paddy O'Shea in an all Kerry full back line. From also O'Shea, Lee Keegan, and Jack McCaffrey in half. Backline, Brian Fenton and Jack O'Shea make up the midfield with Pat Spillane, Dermot Connolly and Peter Canavan making up a rather exciting half-forward line. Uh, I'll go to you first, Colin, because it's, it's, it's looking very green and gold, this team, so you must like the look of it. Ah, the dubs of a few in there, well, Rory, has to be said. Uh, <laughs> no, look, I think it's, it's created huge debate, and even, even talking with lads down here in Killarney and in Kerry, um, it's 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 a difficult. I think I think I think we we're happy with her lot at the moment in Kerry, but it's an impossible team to pick. And even even when you like you you can make cases for several players in in, in different lines. Um, even the last line, Peter Canavan. I can't remember him ever playing in a half forward line, but he has to fit in in the six somewhere. So um, I think I think that there's no doubt about it. He would certainly be in my six. Um, Dear McConnelly, outstanding footballer, club and county. Um, maybe perhaps fortunate given that he maybe missed a little bit of time with the dubs. No doubt in his ability, absolutely no doubt about that. Uh, love watching the guy, hate her playing against him because he could literally do anything in any position with any side of his boot. So, um, both look very, very strong team. Um, and it'll be an interesting next line to, to, to get to get softened as well. I have to ask you then, who who, who might you have had ahead of Dear McConnelly then? Um, I don't know. If, look, with Paddy Joyce being with a with a shout, he was. Um, look, there's there's lots of different guys. I saw, I saw. So I suppose I'm only speaking from my generation, but I saw a few lads giving a shout to Greg Blaney from Down. Um, would, would Trevor Giles fit in there somewhere? I, I I don't know. You could make a case for a lot of guys, but um, I think Pat was probably an automatic given his list of list of honors and. Um, yeah. Uh, he, like, uh, he had a rather strong vote, yes, you could say. Yeah, I can imagine that. But um, so yeah, it's a, it's a fairly and whatever whatever way it finishes, it'll be a fairly formidable team. However, it turns out it will. Kevin, what 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 do you make of that half forward line? Uh, if you recall, I started off my last podcast with you, Mikey, asking who was in charge of this whole operation. Well, Peter Canavan won a number of All Stars uh, forward line. You had to be included there. We didn't oh, stop, want another JJ Delaney. He had to get on this team somehow, or we'd be in a lot of trouble in yeah. Tyrone, as we already are. So we don't want any more trouble in Tyrone. So we had to make sure he made fully, the team. Fully, fully agree with you and Cullum's uh, opinion that Peter would be found somewhere in the six. But it's outrageous to think <laughs> that somebody would, him, that somebody would would use his talents to such uh, absolutely obliterate him and put him on a half forward line. When he is out and out, a full forward line man, and um, so who do we blame, Kevin? Who do we blame? It's, it's, it's the public. Blame the it's public. The public. <laughs> well, no, in fairness, uh, we can't blame the public here. We are going on all stars awarded, and he won a number of all stars in the half forward line. So that's okay. He had well, to be I would say, I'd say, Mikey, the all star selectors had the same dilemma. They had to shoehorn him in somewhere onto mm, the team that yeah. year. And probably were trying to facilitate somebody else. But Peter Canavan is 100% no more than that other young corner forward that's on the podcast with us today. 100% nailed down in the top two, three full forward men of all time. And the, the, I suppose the question 
and just to add a little bit to what uh, Colin was saying, Mikey. Well, if 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 Peter was in the full forward line, uh, and uh, Jeremy Conley perhaps was a half forward line, or maybe didn't make the team, who else would be out there? And you mentioned well, Greg Blaney, uh, Gooch, and and yeah. Trevor Giles, and again Trevor Giles was an incredible footballer, as was Blaney. But and I'll be coming back to this because now I have to shoehorn someone into the full forward line, Mikey. Matt Connor, the fact, the idea that he's not at eleven for those of us of that generation. Um, I played against Matt Connor a few times and obviously watched him loads of times. And um, he was. Did you play with? Did you play against him at inter county level, uh, Kev? Or... I did. Yeah. In fact, Rory, I'm, I was thinking about it, uh, getting ready for the podcast. I think I played against Matt Connor in his last ever match because, unfortunately, it was a, a late league game, maybe in November, December, November, I would say. And the following, I think it was, I was coming home from duty on Stevens's morning. So it was uh, that Christmas. So I think it was Christmas, Christmas, yeah. Christmas of 84, if my memory is right. That's because um, we had played them in the National League uh, in, in November, a few weeks earlier. I, and I think that was probably his last match, I'd be saying. But Rory, this guy, Matt Connor, um, was phenomenal. Like, yeah. Matt Connor... Uh, and I know Pat has, is laden with honours and so Matt Connor is a better footballer than Pat Spanan, better footballer than Jeremy Connolly, a better, way better footballer than Peter Canavan in those positions. He had everything. Two of the best feet you ever saw, the perfect build for playing on the half line. He could carry, he could dummy, he could fetch his own ball, he could do the whole gamut. He really could. And the idea that he has not made that half forward line. I was going to say it's the recency again. You know, we argue this the yeah. last time. There's a load of older lads are making it now as well, I can see, from my generation and beyond. Um, but, yeah, the Matt Connor thing is now nearly as outrageous, if not as outrageous as James Vine. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, can I, Kevin, can I ask you, Mac, like Matt Connor obviously has an unbelievable reputation. and It was definitely before my time, and I would have watched videos of him and the skill and the way he was able to drop the shoulder, do me solo. Was he a better outside player than inside? He, he was, Colm, yeah. He, 11 is his position. But, right. you know, I, I'd be rooting fairly hard now to shoehorn him into this full forward line. Um, okay. Because, again, like Peter Canavan, like yourself, and like Pat and Fairness as well, you know, they have to be in this top six. And now, you know, three, you know four into three doesn't go. That's the problem, I guess, with a lot of these lines. Um, but, oh, he was a marvellous... Mar like, he... Walsh Island when he was playing with them as well at club level he was a phenomenal footballer and it was just dreadful I don't know what age he was when that happened but he, he, he was probably the best player in the country there for a period of time great great player Okay well let's get on because I, 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 I'll, um, I'll uh, divulge that he is he is in this top 10 here of uh, full forward line so I'll give you the top 10 as voted for by the readers of RT.ie and the vote is not closed people will be able to to listen to the arguments here and then possibly uh, cast a, their vote. We've had um, well over 10,000 votes for the full forward line, you know, the Hollywood stars like Gooch there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the the so, sunshine footballers. Exactly. Here we go, blowing kisses and the like. So at 10, we have Conal Callahan. At 9, the aforementioned Mickey Linden. At 8, Conor McManus. At 7, the Bomber Liston. At 6, Porrick Joyce. At 5, Mikey Sheehy. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've got 11 in my top 10. I'll still, our top 11 this week, Conor Callahan, Mickey Linden, Conor McManus, Bomber Liston, Porrick Joyce. At six, we have uh, Mikey Sheehy. At five, we have Matt Connor. At four, Bernard Brogan. At three, Morris Fitzgerald. At two, Michael Murphy. And at number one, not sitting too far away from us, Colin Cooper who got over 5,000 votes, Colm. Well done, Colm. Yeah. Now, all, my buddies, all my buddies voted. <laughs> no. They did not, what I asked them to do. They did yeah. what I asked them to do. We're not going to turn this into a testimonial because you've had one of them already. <laughs> I have. But, I have. <laughs> just, um, we'll, let, we'll let other people talk about you for a moment. Um, Kevin, would you, would you agree, first of all, with the man at the top of the list and how would the rest of the list shape up for you? Uh, well, you see, you're now at a kind of um, you're you're in a and you're what's the, there's people who are good at golf and then there's another level or you're now in it you're at, you're now in a different stratosphere when you're talking about 
the Cullum Coopers, uh, the Porrick Joyce's, the Matt Connors, to his, I mentioned him, of course, uh, uh, Bernard Brogan, yeah, marvellous, marvellous player, Mikey Sheehy, John Egan, John Egan hasn't made that top 11, yeah. that's, geez, that's, that's, a, that's a strange one, um, Michael Murphy, Jeez, I, I, you know, Michael Murphy's going to be very hard to buy. Like you're just at another level because this is this is the, the showbiz line, isn't it, Mikey? Really, mm. because um, scoring, I would say, you know, scoring returns, uh, uh, able to secure your own ball, skill, vision. Um, Column, of course, always was very tidy in the year. That went by an awful lot of people too. Um, well able to mind mind themselves in the year and get nice touches. To advantage and touches for goals and stuff like that. The the look, he's had just had another level. That that goal column you scored against uh, us a few the, the the little hop inside and the placement. That that sort of that's just at another level of the game. The ability to slow down the chaos of that moment and just so I, I can't look. I, I'm a bit embarrassed talking about you like this because it just uh, it, it just everything he did spoke and uh, spoke for his ability and the way he Class. played. Just a complete class footballer and completely well deserved your your place in the pantheon. I can assure you, uh, but you're in massive company. I mean, geez, the players around you, you know, it's hard to it, like you're. It's cigarette paper thin, isn't it? It's it's. There are so many brilliant players. I, I was I throw this out and then I I I'll stop talking for a sec. But do you remember the the curry? Uh, full forward line, Mikey. Say, own list in Mikey Shee, John Egan, or Johnny, uh, Mikey Shee, own list in John Egan, right? Mm. And you say, geez, there could never be a full forward line like that again. And less than five, six, seven years later, you had O'Rourke, Stafford, and Flynn. As good as anything I ever, you know, and they probably won't even get a mention in this uh, full forward line. Like Colm O'Rourke was a magnificent football Colm O'Rourke was near the top 11. Yeah, and uh, on, a, on a beaten, on a wallop team for many years, you have to remember that, Colum, you had a good luck to come into a yeah. team on the up, and timing is everything, of course, in, in this game, um, but you make your own luck too, of course, um, but O'Rourke had to soldier, like, uh, with half them fellas on his back for, for 10 years uh, before he got the breakthrough, so I, it's just, I, the list of players that could be on, on this full forward line, that Top fifteen, maybe, Mikey. If you if you open it out to that, she's the every one of them in their own right could be the best player of all time in their own county. You know. Yeah, Colin. My favorite story about you actually came from Paul Galvin when he said um, it was a sports. It was a GA hour um, road show. You were on it. It was a great show in um, in Dublin ahead of another Ireland final about three or four years ago. And he was telling regaling us with tales of being your roommate. And he reminded, mm. you reminded us a little bit of Jack O'Shea, who used to always get up and go for a game of pitch and putt every all our <laughs> final morning. You wouldn't be anywhere near that active. Uh, Galvin said he pretty much had to light a bomb under you to get you out of bed. You'd hit the snooze button so many times. Which just speaks of a very, very, very relaxed man um, who was quite clearly born to play football on a big stage and uh, might, might go some way to explaining why you are as well thought of as you are. Yeah, well, first I'll start with that's that's a funny duo myself and Paul Galvin in a room because um, there's there's contrasting um, personalities there I would say but uh, we did so for a couple of years we had great fun but I, I was great to get up in the morning with a big match but I was very good at getting back into bed for a couple of hours as well I think <laughs> uh, um, I just I, I my mindset where that came from was in terms of just trying to save energy. Um, because I knew I needed as much to get around Crow Path for 70 minutes. I needed every ounce of that energy. Um, and I, I used to see fellas walk in the hallways and walking with the gardens at the hotel, and I could never really figure out. Like, they were obviously very nervous and tense before matches, and I get that, but some of them some of them were, like, they, they would change colour. They'd be so pale going, on, going into bit on the bus to Crow Path, but it's just my personality and my makeup was different. Um, I, I was probably someone as well who, when I knew my body was fit and I was fit, I'd, I, I, had, I had an awful lot of confidence. And I just felt that Croke Park was, was a little bit of a playground that regardless of who I was mapping, if it was an Anthony Lynch, if it was, if it was a Ricey McManaman, if it was any of those guys, that just once I'm on form, I'll still have the beating of these guys once, once, once I'm ready and I'm relaxed. And I suppose the earlier parts of my career, guys could get inside my head a lot easier. Um, if there was a bit of talking going on, if there was a bit of off pulling the jersey and things, I would have probably reacted. 
whereas I kind of brushed it off. And by the time the mid 2000s came around, I kind of enjoyed a little bit of an extra battle in there once once I was fit and once once I was once once I, and quite honestly, I would say I knew going to Croke Park if I was going well in Kerry training that I'd probably be ready for whatever came at me in Croke Park, and that's maybe why I was lucky enough to play to play to play well in, in a lot of the big games in Croke Park. And look, there's no doubt about it. Kevin touched on this. I was playing with some superb footballers as well. Some of them are even on this team. So like, it it helps when you have that caliber of player around you. But um, where where did the relaxed the relaxed nature of me come from? It probably came from the confidence I had going into big matches, and probably and again from 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 the guys I had around me. And when you have that confidence and confidence in your skill level, everything to slow down and even if it slows down by a second that's a major advantage over everybody else and you become a lot more composed mm. um, I won't I won't I won't Pat Glam is quite happy to talk about himself I'm not sure how happy you are to talk about yourself but I would <laughs> just I, I'd be interested to know what you considered your greatest strength um, sorry consider because you still haven't retired have you so I, I just well, you, should, Mikey Mikey can I there Wait, Rory, he, I think we've got a revelation coming here. Okay. No, can, can, can I just say before, I, I don't think you ever retire from your club, first of all, but he actually played with the Dr. Coke C team just before the, um, just before the lockdown came, and I scored eight points for the Croke C team, so officially I'm back again. Hey! Oh, brilliant! <laughs> Fantastic! The Killer Bees. We played we played Spa from Killarney, so it was a local derby. So they were delighted to see me tagged out with the third team. <laughs> but, uh, but Mikey, Mikey, you mentioned there you were just asking Cullum about his greatest strength, and I and, and it just brought to mind one of the funniest moments I would say in terms of the time I've been involved in the Sunday game was the night that Martin McHugh. <laughs> I think you were on Kevin. You were on the panel that night. I think. When Martin, oh, McHugh, when, Ma- when, Ma- when Martin McHugh said that Gooch is a one-trick pony, or two-trick pony, two-trick pony, I think it was. Now, I, I remember going home that night and my dad rang and he said, yeah, he said, Rory, Martin McHugh's right, he said. And I said, what do you mean? He said, he is a two-trick pony, goals and points. <laughs> <laughs> Cullum, uh, lads, can I, tell you, can I tell you a very quick one uh, um, about Cullum? And uh, it's at the expense of my wife, but she won't mind me saying it. Uh, I was, I was uh, doing the night show uh, the year you had a big win over Mayo. And I don't know, was it, was it 04 or 06? It was one of the... 04, I'd say, yeah. Yeah. So I was doing the night show and maybe around half five. You know, there's a kind of a breather around half five, Rory. And we went outside yeah. the garden at the time for a bit of fresh air and the phone rang and it was, and it was my wife and uh, she had gone off when the match was about to start she went down to her uh, neighbour's house uh, down the road here um, to watch the match together and of course the, you know the rest uh, Terry blew, blew them away so I was just like Jesus how is it always I'm on this watch when Mayo get and, and Rona was saying uh, oh no you know you have to put the best side forward now and not be not be uh, walloping into me or anything. And, and I said, ah, no, it's not even that. I said, it's just the disappointment of it. And uh, she said, well, look, as we were saying, as we girls were saying down there, like, like it's, it's, it's very hard. Like, how do, you, how do you mark, you know, Cooper in one corner and just have another bit of Gooch in the other corner? <laughs> 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 no, it, uh, I said, girls, you know something? I'll leave it at that now. I'll, I'll, leave the, I'll deal with the analysis tonight. But uh, the, uh, what, I'd say what, it must what, have felt like that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> one, one last, one other, one other really great memory. I don't know if it's a great memory, and I'd be very interested to hear Colm's take on it. I never asked you about this before, but my first memory uh, was 2002, your first year. First on the year, Kerry yeah. Senior yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, uh, Cork, we're playing Kerry, and the game was in, it was in Clarny, and it was on the same day that Ireland were playing Cameroon yeah. mm-hmm. after the Roy Keane and the Saipan and all of that type of thing. And I, I, all I remember was going down to Killarney and the word was going around about this fella, Cooper, you know, like that, that he was going to be unveiled today. And the, match, the match anyway went ahead. It was an awful game. I think it finished in a draw, if I'm correct. It was at mm. in nine or ten points all and it lashed. Now, I was coming out of it saying to myself, because you, like you didn't exactly set the world on fire on that particular day, but like I was thinking to myself afterwards, that was because... It was absolutely apocalyptic weather conditions. 
and I was kind of coming away. Sure, he he wasn't all that really. Like there was no really big, yeah. you know, nothing to worry about there. <laughs> little, did yeah, know, little did he know yeah. that we, we, it was going to torment us for ten years, fifteen years. So I yeah, you want to be patient. But, so to go to but, go back to my question, Colin, your your greatest strength. I'm still very curious to know what you think it was. Um, it's it, it's difficult. It's difficult, but I would say probably my vision, Mikey that I just had a sense of what was going on around me and that allowed me to make decisions half a second quicker than anyone and maybe see a pass that maybe people could see but maybe either couldn't execute or maybe didn't even see. So I think I remember um, I remember Aidan O'Shea from Mayo was doing an interview maybe two or three years ago and, he, and he, my name popped up and it was, it was just interesting to hear from guys that you play, normally play against. He mentioned, like, most guys, you, you have an idea what they're going to do, but you, then you have Gooch, who you really have no idea. He might play corner forward. He might come out the field. He might kick with his left. He might kick with the right. He might bury a goal. He might set someone up. So it was probably because of that. If you have unpredictability, it's difficult to match. And I think that was probably something I got from my vision of knowing that what was going on around me. And um, I keep going back to the second thing. But if you think and see things a second quicker than everyone else it makes your life a lot easier I can, show, I can, I can tell you uh, Indeed um, I'll stay with you there Colin just to go to man number two in the list you obviously struck up a very fine relationship with a big full forward yourself uh, Mr Donaghy uh, what would be your own opinion of Michael Murphy because some might say he's still playing he's kind of maybe he's uh, this is the recency bias but on the other hand I don't know if I've, I don't know if there's a more complete footballer playing the game at the moment in terms of where he can play, what he can do, his power, his relative speed. Like, I would imagine, could you imagine being a corner forward with him playing at full forward? You'd have a field day, I'd imagine. Yeah, well, you'd love him as a teammate because obviously his talent speaks for itself. His strength, his physical. Uh, what I really liked about him during his career, he was a leader at 21 or 2 for Donegal, captain of a team that was a lot of experience and a lot of... Um, a lot of strong characters, I suppose, in, 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 on the team. And he, he excelled in that role. He got better year on year on it. I still feel we didn't see, ultimately see the best of Michael Murphy and Rory. We've had discussions in, in pre-Sunday game about this. I feel we never saw enough of him at 14, playing on top of the square in every match. I think he would have was that because of the defense? Was that because of the defensive systems that kind of got boarded up there over the course of the middle of the last decade that sort of transgressed the, sort of the, the main part of his career that he had no choice but to uh, drift out? Quite possibly, but I think it was a mistake by Donegal Roy because I, one, I think they look back with the team that they had in 2012. They, I think they, they should feel anyway that there was another All-Ireland in, in there for them because they lost to Kerry in 14. They lost two semi, or did they, lost, they lost a final to, to Dublin. And I think if they were a bit more... Um, attack minded that they could have got more out of Murphy and more out of McFadden and more out of those type of players I think you should like if I was the Kerry manager playing against Michael Murphy I'd be delighted if he's playing around the middle of the field because he's he's a little bit easier to handle obviously he's, he's physical I think he played out there for, for, for Donegal because he gave them more strength around that area he played as a third midfielder he was an option for kickouts and he made the decision the right decision nearly every time out there but look, when, when push comes to shove in big matches, and I, do, I don't think Donegal were unbelievably strong in the full forward line, I think he could have brought them to another level. And that, that was probably, that's, my, that's a selfish, my selfish view on Michael Murphy, that maybe I would have loved to have seen him there for a four or five year period to see what he, what he could have done in there. Um, but look, they decided to play a different way. But there's no doubt in his ability. He's done it he, like he's, he, he, he got, he... Um, he won a county title for his club as well. I'm not sure if they went down to win the Ulster club after, but um, exceptional player. Like, and we'll we'll go down as one of the greatest Donegal players of all time, uh, if not the greatest. And I can see why he's so far up the list. Quite selfishly, a little bit for me, I suppose. I would love to see him play as an inside forward longer than we have. Mm. And 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 just if you just for people who are trying to remind, think back. Think of that goal against Mayo in 2012 when he played one on one against a guy in top of the square. And I think there was so much more in Michael Murphy if we saw him in that, in that scenario. Um, 
But look, that's that's yeah. that's that's the way it is. Kevin, you're an opposition manager. Are, would you agree with Colm's assessment? If you see uh, Michael Murphy out the field, you're relatively happy. If you see him on the edge of the square, you're terrified. Yeah, and the same for Colm when he went to 11. If I was managing, then the further these guys are away from the goal, <laughs> the happier you are about it. Michael Murphy ended up at 11 and 8 and sometimes auxiliary 6 um, simply because he was needed everywhere. You know, they, 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 he got on the ball more often, Colm, I suppose, out there. So he has more touches. So he's a really good decision maker. So the more touches he has, the better things are probably going to be. You know, that's the other rationale. But I, I, I remember when I was a young manager and coach, I was a fecker for uh, selecting fellas on the half forward line that, you know, were athletic and worked and worked and worked. And this is even before people used to drop back, but then, you know, lads would be going up and down the, the tram lines of him, if you can think 10 and 12. And I used to always be going for that type of a player. But then one of my selectors, I remember one said to me, the Jesus, he said, do you think we could pick someone in the half forward line that might have the odd score in them? You know? <laughs> And uh, uh, you forget that, you see, because at the end of the day, you have to have a scoring threat. And you can't have a scoring threat, you know, if you're playing in the hole just above six or you're playing midfield, unless you're very athletic. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't call Michael Murphy very athletic. He's not a Brian Fenton, if you like. So it's hard to get from back to front and get your shot off with fellas hanging out of you. So I agree, of course, um, you would love to have him at 14 and, and absolutely. Any manager that has the brain in him at all will say, Geez, if I could get him back down playing full back, or does, does he fancy playing in goal for 20 minutes? You'd love to get him away from the action. But uh, I agree also that um, it's very hard to keep this, keep Michael Murphy now off this full forward line too, because he was a brilliant player. Isn't it interesting um, that Kieran Donnelly hasn't featured hmm. in that top list? No. Yeah. That's very interesting to me now as well. It, it goes to show you the way the public, on one level, they never surprise you, and then on another level, they totally surprise you. You know, um, Donny, he was probably the ultimate team player, though, as opposed mm. to an individual. I'd say, Kevin, and I don't know. Look, I'm not trying to go speak for him. I'm sure, Colin would probably uh, give us better insight there. Like Donny, he was like Donny. He, he was a heavy he, scorer. Mm, yeah, he wasn't prolific, Rory. You know, from the point of view of like he did spectacular things in a match where he could catch it over three guys and set up a goal or get a goal himself or take it off guys. Um, he was probably uh, opposing fans. Used didn't like him too often. He was that sort of a character, you know. And yeah. he used to revel in that. He used to revel in that. But if you're looking at the list of players that we have here, and you're judging it, you're judging it, uh, judging a lot of this on scoring returns and maybe that sort of thing. Kieran probably isn't that is isn't going to be top of that list, and maybe that's he, why he's he not featured. He What's that? Enough. He scored a fair bit. Yeah. He got a lot of goals and big matches. And he got big yeah. scores. Like, that's what I'm saying. He did, he did spectacular things and he got big scores. And even was, go he back point, to was he a point scorer? Did he score many points? He Not kicked, really kicked, kicked a couple of points. He was probably never getting four or five points a match, but he might kick two and set up a goal or two. I'd say he fixed more points than he ever kicked as well now, did he? Yeah, well, he kicked a great one against the Dubs in 2011 to level the game, both from the Cusick side. But, oh, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, 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 like, I think I'm trying to get my mindset around the way people are judging this and voting on it. And maybe because it's, su it's such a strong line, I think, I think scoring is going to be right up there in their decision making. But yeah. rightly so. Rightly so. Yeah. I mean, that, that is the number one reason you're in a full forward line, is to score. In my yeah. and, and like you have to remember here, like, and we talked about Michael Murphy probably touching the ball and making good things happen around the field. Like, I remember looking at Clifford this year for Kerry. And I, I was saying to myself, going to Cope Park, he, vert, he only really needs to touch the ball 10 times. And that could be 1-4. 1-6. One, one yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's for the really, really top forwards and to have that sort of mentality. Sometimes people think you need to touch the ball all the time. If you're, if you're a very clever and clinical player, you don't really. Yeah. Mm. Well, he, like, I, was actually, I just had to go back and make sure Kieran Donahue was was in on the list to be voted for and he was because I am actually kind of surprised because he's not in the top 15 the top 15 is rounded out by David Clifford's at 12 Stephen O'Neill 13 Palmer O'Rourke 14 and Andy Moore in 15 so you can see it is very much it's the men who who raise the flags and yeah I suppose like there is one tall Kerry man in the full forward in the top three at the moment and that's that's Morris Fitz who's who's, who's 
a bit of an enigma, really, Colm, isn't he? For for those of us from outside Kerry, he's a bit of an enigma. I would love to, like, he's obviously absolutely revered, but some of his, probably his most iconic moment came when he was a substitute. He wasn't a, he wasn't yeah. a, a guaranteed nailed on Kerry starter for all of his career, yet the, the public have considered him one of the three best inside forwards to play the game in the last yeah. couple of years. Well, listen, I suppose the first thing I would say is Morris made his debut for Kerry in 88 at a stage when the Kerry great team was just gone and he was coming into a, it was coming to a cycle where Kerry weren't that strong mm. and Cork, Cork with Tompkins, Stephen O'Brien and all those guys. Cork were on top for certainly, Rory, we would say probably certainly to the mid-90s. Yeah, they won. They won. 90 Cork, that Cork, yeah, I think that Cork team won six out of seven Munsters, yeah. which, would be, yeah. which would be, you know, very... Very unusual. Yeah, and in the middle of that, you probably had a Kerry, you the Kerry team uh, that lost to Clare '92 in a Munster final, something that would never have happened, which Morris was part of as well. But so that was a difficult time for Kerry. So maybe he's st- he's he's starred in China's brightly during that period. Mm. But certainly, as as from the from '96 and '97 on, he was a phenomenal player. Like a, again, he, he seemed like a gentle giant. He glided across the ground. He he was probably the most elegant player I ever saw. Like he those long tanned legs. He could kick like even even he was still playing when I when I started playing with Crokes, he was like he was a hero to so many people. But it just the balance, um the balance, the skill level from him. He's probably the most skillful player I played against, probably, in terms of he'd more on the top of his fingernail than most players. But um but you're right, in two thousand he was a sub on the team and that created huge debate down in Kerry in terms mm. of how was, how was potentially one of your top three players a sub on the team and maybe we were getting to the stage where it, at that point it was more important to finish with your best team and I remember our man the drawn semi it was a semi-final yeah he he, he barely he, he, nearly, he nearly grabbed the game by the scuff from Nick to get Kerry through that and um, so I can see why his vote is very strong um, bear in mind Colum of- Bear in mind also, if I can just add a little bit to it, um, and I was there when he started in '88. I, I was playing for Bayo at the time, and everybody knew he was a very special talent on a on a beaten ticket year 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 after year because Cork had the measure. But bear in mind when when his day did come, when the opportunity came in 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 ninety um, seven in ninety seven. So like, not too many players are remembered for totally dominating a final. Mm. You know, you have your moments in a final, you know, you, you, you had them obviously, but to dominate it pretty much from start to finish. Um, and he needed to dominate it, by the way, because Mayo would have yeah. won that. There was a very average mm. Kerry team, the 97 team, I would argue. Um, but Morris put on a display that day that was just outrageous. Um, and that's probably what has captured the public imagination or maybe older members of it. Like, like beyond that, Beyond that, you'd have to say he didn't make the massive impact that all these other players, like take, take a Parik Joyce, no doubt we'll get around to Parik in a few minutes. Mm. That type of player who, again, he dominated the final, the Mead final um, mm. also, to that level of it. But Parik did it over a long period of time, you know, with Galway and, and a lot of success with them. So... Fitz, uh, Maris Fitz is a player like I would have incredible respect for and I really admire like his skill level is out of this world and he had the two finest feet of any football mm. probably to play the game and that he just pips Matt Connor now in that department because Matt had two serious feet too but I'd say Maris Fitz kick and freeze with both, both feet out of his hands from distance with both feet etc etc he, he, he was a serious performer I think I think that point in Turles against the Dubs in two thousand and one mm. oh. lives in people's memories, not just Kerry people's memories, but everyone, because you have a strong wind. It's the last kick of the game. You've Tommy Cairn early, <laughs> ready to climb up his back. <laughs> so it's 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 one of those iconic moments. Yeah. That, um, uh, I can only imagine what Tommy was saying to him, but that's another story. But yeah. it was just a magical score, and I think that's what sticks in the minds. Again, spectacular moments from. No, he got one in uh, in that final against Mayo. I think he kicked either a free. Right on the sideline, on his left, sideline, out on the out on the Cusick side. Remember? Yeah. It? Oh, he did. He, he did, did outside slicer. the right. Yeah, he did a yeah. slicer into the hill. He did, and he kicked he kicked the free off the ground with his left in the first half, underneath the, the old Hogan stand. So, <laughs> like, just skill level was exceptional. Yeah, 
We could, we could see the see the pain, Mikey. Do you remember these things? <laughs> the pain is just etched on it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you drink all that wine behind you. <laughs> <laughs> we could we could obviously sit here and talk about everybody in this top eleven, top fifteen, and it would be a very long show, but we'd really enjoy ourselves. So before I actually ask you guys to give me your favourites, because that's probably the best way for us to get the best out of this, I just one I was looking through the voting and it's a fair bit down, but like mid ranking in our forty odd people is Matty Ford, and not too far mm. below him is Declan Brown. I was going and like to these it, uh, these guys have have more votes than like Joe Brawley and Brian Stafford put together. It's kind of the one line where a player from a smaller county can can make his mark. You could be a damn fine wing back. On the Wicklow team, no offense, to Wicklow's where I live now. But like, because you're on the back foot most of the time, you're unlikely to get noticed. But even on a losing team like the team that Declan Brown played on for so many years, everyone knew who Declan Brown was because he was the he was the guy on that Tipperary team. He was the he made something happen out of nothing. And Matty Ford, similar now, Matty Ford played on a Wexford team that reached an All Ireland semi final. But at the same time, for a long time, he was playing on a very poor Wexford team. And these guys are known and respected around the country. It's interesting that. It's kind of a curse to be the best, you know, by far the best player in a weak team. But at the same time, at least if you're a full forward on these teams, you're noticed. It's something. Mm. You, you, you kind of break through the, the zeitgeist. Mm. Well, I, I, played, I played at a time when those guys, these two guys were at their peak. I, I obviously played against Dixon in Munster Championship matches and saw him up close. And he was, he was an unbelievable player. I played Railway Cup with him. One, I think I'm not sure what year it was up in Galway. And he was, he was, by, he was by, we played Ulster and he was the best player on the pitch that day. Um, and I saw Matty Ford up close and personal in 2005 on the, on the international rules. He was an exceptional player. He like I knew he was good, but when, when we when we got into the the trials and the training, um, he was he was unbelievable player. Like left, right, balance, could see a pass, brave. Um, he had he like he propelled Wexford to Northern Ireland semi final in 2008. Like mm-hmm. completely uncharted territory for them, really. Like in terms of, is it Tyrone? Yeah, Tyrone. Yeah. But um, unbelievable footballer, and I, I think he only recently retired. Uh, Mikey had said that he he was playing club football up to late, lately enough. I think. Right? Like yourself, he got dragged back a couple of times. He went back, I think, for them. To, they won the intermediate, Kyle and they won intermediate last year, I think, or did he? I think they did. They've gone down to the intermediate. I think he came back to help them get promotion, and now I think he's done again. He was a super yeah. sub. Yeah. yeah, and the thing, and the thing with I, with players like this, I don't li- I don't like the phrase of if they were with Kerry or if they were with mm. Dublin and things. We saw them, and we saw how good they were because they weren't from the powerhouse counties. They didn't get they, they they didn't get the opportunity to win those medals or play in the big finals. But we still had the opportunity to see some of the brilliance from both of them, and uh, they would easily walk onto inter county sides anywhere across the country. Mm. And you have to be you have to be fairly into it, Mikey, to stay. Plowing, you know, at this low level where you know you're not going to be winning provinces and uh, all Ireland's, and yet uh, year after year, Brown and Matty Ford, and back in my time or slightly before it, the fellow down here in Sligo called Mickey Kearns, and mm-hmm. here in where I live in Roscommon, Tony McManus, these sort of unbelievable footballers, and you know, you remember Cullum when 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 um, when Matty was at his, at his Height and Declan Brown, you know, they got a two or three year window where they were just unmarkable. Mm-hmm. You know, if that ball went to Matty Ford, the next thing that was going to happen was it was going to be a shot and it was most likely going to be a score. There wasn't a whole lot more going to happen after he got the ball, he was going to finish mm-hmm. it. And he, he was at that standard. I was doing a lot of the co coms around on that Wexford um, kind of journey uh, where they were really um, making people stand up and watch. Uh, and they had one great chance against Dublin. I'm sure Mikey, you remember that. Where uh, yeah. they well Anthony Masterson, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> it wasn't goal or happened or, uh, there was a very fluky goal, very, very, very fluky goal. Uh, the um, so at, when they were at their height, they were as good as anything that was around. Um, unfortunately, they were on teams that just weren't going to pick up um, the, the big awards. But uh, yeah, I, 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 I would agree. Uh, with, with your with your opinions, lads, they were they were super super players. But every county kind of does produce a client, like as you're saying, Mikey, uh, some sort of a client on a pull forward line that's yeah. better than better than average. It's probably the only way you're going to make that massive impression from a weaker county. Yeah. Is you know, is the, we're back to scoring again. That's mm-hmm. what 
kind of lights it up a bit, isn't it? It is indeed. So, Colm, uh, we, w- we won't embarrass you and make you put yourself in your own top three because you're going to be in everybody else's. Could you tell me what, what is your full forward line? I'm interested to see what kind of mix you'd put in. What's your, who, what Jeez. are the three you're choosing? Can you not start with Kevin, no? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I can because Kevin definitely knows that he's, he has... He has it written knows, down yeah. in green <laughs> I've changed it three or four times. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I haven't actually, Colm. I, I wrote it down uh, last night. Uh, I, I actually, I saw your, I saw, um, oh, I'm not sure who wrote the article online for the RT Sport where they, they, they consolidated all uh, the... Jim, Jim McMahon uh, wrote it this week. Yeah. It was Jim, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I was, uh, I was reading through that and, uh, and I'll just, I'll throw in another one just before I get to my three. It's only take a few seconds now, Mikey, but like, <laughs> the idea, fellas, that, my, that Declan O'Sullivan isn't on this six. Like, Declan, like you're talking about being around good players, Colm. Like, Declan mm. O'Sullivan would make an Egypt look fairly tidy in the full forward line. John Kavanagh gave him a massive shout out in the last podcast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Spoke very highly of him. Very, very yeah. highly. Mm. Yeah, well, Declan O'Sullivan, I'd have him up there in the in the you know the Matt Connor department, uh, etc. Like he, Declan O'Sullivan was a brilliant player. I think John Kavanagh said he was the best player. He was one of the best players he ever played against. He yeah, oh, yeah, I, I would absolutely uh, uh, see how he could say that. Declan O'Sullivan was a massive player, lads. A massive, massive player for a good period of time as well. Until he was best, he couldn't drag himself <laughs> through a match and. Uh, Jesus, to have him at 11 feeding your ball, when you came off your marker, he'd find you, you know, mm-hmm. and he'd find you the right side. And, but anyway, I'll give you my three to get the, to get the row started, if you like. Um, I have Cullum in at uh, right corner, because I want to come on to his favourite left, even though he has a, an outstanding right as well. <laughs> um, the, uh, and of course, he, he'll take the freeze for me in there as well, every time. <laughs> no, no problem there. I... Had to put Matt Connor at full forward, lads, at the expense of Michael Murphy. I just had to. I I couldn't uh, have witnessed him in my time. I I've seen nothing. I've seen nothing really. Um, he should be eleven, so I can blame him. Ye and uh, are the voters or whatever. And in the other corner, then, um, and I had a long think about this because you know I, I want to be fair to everybody. Like Bernard Brogan, these players, brilliant finishers and so on. But in an overall sense. Two-footedness, uh, free taker, cool out, vision, pass through the ball. I had to put Porrick Joyce in it. You know, and you might say, okay, well, that's because I've looked at him across the fence uh, for the for the twenty years, beating May or whatever. Porrick Joyce could hold his own in any company. Um, had a lot of versatility as well. Could have played in different positions. But if I had Cullum Cooper and Matt Connor and Porrick Joyce in my full forward line. I'd be winning 90 games out of 100 every season. <laughs> no, no problem. And if I caught someone not giving them in the ball, <laughs> out the gate quick. Because that, that full forward line can get their own ball, can mind their own ball, they can pass it among themselves, they can take the freeze when they're fouled, they're tidy in the air. And you, they can take it any way you want it. Yeah. And uh, they'd score between them Minimum of three three fifteen a match, and if you couldn't, <laughs> if you couldn't win it at that, good luck. I, I I would I would I would have your full forward line, Kevin, but I'd take out Matt Connor and put in Matty Ford because I'm not as old as you and I'm from Wexford. But I'd have Paul <laughs> and, and Gooch, and then I'd throw in Matty Ford. Okay, we'll give Gooch another minute there, Rory. What's yours? Yeah, I do, uh, I go along with uh, two out of three as well from Kevin and the only, Matt Connor is the only one I'd remove for two reasons. One, I probably didn't really see enough of him, and two, I agree with Kevin. I think he was more of a centre forward than a full forward. And the only difference then I would make going in at fourteen is um, I, I I I just thought that Stephen O'Neill was for me anyway. I just thought Stephen. O'Neill, I, I need to. I I don't actually remember seeing Stephen O'Neill play a bad game for Tyrone. I think he was a massive leader for them. Uh, I, I I just thought he was just an an absolutely sublime full forward and a brilliant target man. And um, he would be my choice at fourteen. Okay, right, Callum, your time's up. Over to me. Yeah. Um, I have Paul Joyce at 14. Uh, he's one of my favourite players. I thought he was just brilliant. Could play, could play probably in any of the six positions for Galway. Probably did. Um, Lucky enough to play against him a few times to see him up close and personal. So, top player when, when Galway probably didn't have a huge amount of leaders. 
he's he's an automatic. Matt Connor, I didn't see enough of guys. I was born in eighty three. He stopped playing with with eighty four. Eighty four. Yeah. 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 Have seen I've seen him on videos. Have talked to Shane Lowry about him, um, about the skill level of him. Talked to all the Lowrys about him, and like his reputation around the country is, is phenomenal. But I just I I just didn't see him. I just didn't see him. Can I put myself in, by the way? Yes, of course, Kev. Hey, of course. <laughs> You're in. Yes. I was hoping you yeah. would. Yeah. Um, I know, just, and just, just three call-outs as well. Look, Bernard Brogan's career has been unbelievable. Um, what, what, what he's done. Player of the year. Came back from a cruise ship. Was, 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 was a central figure when the dubs got going. Stevie McDonald as well from Armagh was a phenomenal mm. corner forward. Machine. Um, scoring machine. Yeah, mm. scoring machine. Left and right. Uh, certainly came into my consideration, and another guy that I, one of my favourite players when I was younger years going up was Mickey Linden. Mm. Brilliant player for down speed, uh, could could bury a goal in 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 a second. But uh, I'm going to go with Rory on this lad, Stephen O'Neill. I played against him. If he, if if he wasn't there, I'd probably have a couple of more all Ireland medals. But he was a central figure, along with Brian McGuigan and a couple of more of them with Tyrone in their march to winning. Yeah. Three odd Ireland's, and he was a guy we just couldn't handle. We, we couldn't handle him. His speed, both feet, and accuracy. you know what? Accuracy, and you know what? I think he got better during his mid twenties. I think when he was when he was in his early twenties, he he wasn't as polished. But Jesus, over two or three years, he got phenomenal. He was so strong, and he was one of the central figures to propelling Tyrone to those all Ireland's. And I suppose. Austin Kerry at first hand know how good he was. So, um, so I have... if, I, on, if I can cut across you on, on Stephen O'Neill, and it's interesting how the two of you went for him. Mikey, it's going to be a really hard one to explain now. And I, I, I could shift out Matt Connor, you know, I won't, but I could, uh, because I'm going to throw in the idea that Michael Murphy isn't on, on, on this team. Yeah. It, it, it kind of screws it all up. You know? <laughs> after, after all the logic we've tried to apply to it. You come across, you, you, you leave, you're leaving the place now with, with a, a starting uh, forward six that doesn't have Michael Murphy. And uh, that's I, wrong. Think the pub, I think the public are going to get you out of that because Colm and Michael Murphy are significantly ahead of Mars Fitzgerald in the voting. So I'd be very surprised if the two... The, the, Colm won't get caught and it'd be surprising if Michael Murphy's knocked out of the top three now, to be honest with you. The so. public does know best in the NC, Mikey. Yeah, uh, that's what I've, I've been saying all along. <laughs> you do know, you do know who's the president of America, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> not talking politics this week, Rory. Not okay, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Um, before we go, I just want to ask Colm, what division and championship do the Croaks B team play play on? Because I'm lumping on them. If you can't make the Croaks B, B team, team. <laughs> I know. I want to know who, if you can't make the B team. Oh, it's our yeah, yeah, no. shit hot B team. So, what division are they in? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, our, our our senior team obviously play Division One. Our our B team play Division Two, but I'm right down Division Five. Um, so uh, I was really really great. At, um, so no, it's it's for a bit of fun. It's for a bit of crack. And do you know what? For the one game I got back to play, and it's you. If you're a competitive person, you miss it. So yeah. that's 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 kind of what happened to me. I'm playing for fun now. Will you hang um, around for next year? Uh, if there's no maybe. if there's no games this year. Well, I'm just thinking, Rory. Rory, we could, we you could come down and film us training. The Croke C team training would be would be a barrel of laughs there for the Sunday game someday. Listen, Colum, I'm thinking of making a comeback myself, but it'll be in <laughs> it'll be in Division Eleven North. <laughs> <laughs> we won't send the Sunday game cameras. But... <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> All right, lads, I've I've enjoyed this. Just to say, the hurling podcast will be next week uh, between. Rory's busy schedule putting together this week's show and uh, trying to get hold of our pundits. We couldn't get a hurling podcast this week, but we will round out the hurling team early next week. Uh, we have Sunday Sporters on 2-4 to four again this weekend. And Rory, what's coming up on the Sunday game? Sunday game this week, yeah. We've got, um, we're going to be reflecting on games from last summer, funnily enough. I know people will say the two games we're picking are being picked, obviously, for strategic reasons. Number one, it's Leash against uh, Leash's breakthrough win over Dublin, which, you know, because it happened at a weekend when not a lot was going on, maybe it didn't get the extensive highlights that it deserved. And Eddie is coming in to kind of reflect upon that with us.
plus obviously we'll be hearing from Eddie who's on the front line for this thing that we have going on around us at the minute and the second game believe it or not which is be interesting from Colm's perspective is Kerry Donegal from last year and people will ask why well the main reason is a certain Offaly man actually won the Open Championship on the same day and that particular game if anybody does recall it was arguably the best game of football all of last summer so it just gives us an opportunity maybe to shine a little bit more of a light on it this time round and we have Tomas and Michael Murphy on board so it should be good so tune in half nine Sunday night all right well just to say thank you very much to Rory and to Kevin and to Colm and congratulations Colm it looks like you're going to make this team so well done Um, well done your trophies in the post and we <laughs> will chat to you all next week thank you very much goodbye possession crucial from this how much longer will the referee allow double and lead by a point and there's the whistle it's over it's over we earned it by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us but what I love in Hurling I love players that will never give in he hits it he hits it